Okay. Um, hey, everybody. I hope you can all hear me. Um, I had a little bit of a construction surprise this morning, so um, I'm hoping you're not getting a lot of background noise. Uh, thank you so much for joining us um, and for joining me. My name is Monty Preston. Um, I'm the manager of art advisory and curation at Saatchi Arts. And it is really, really wonderful to have you all here to explore um, the other art fair Brooklyn's virtual edition this weekend. The space looks really amazing. Uh, the curation is incredible. And I'm so excited for you to all go around the fair and see all of the beautiful work. Uh, today, I'm hoping to provide a bit of information that might be helpful for you as you're going around the fair and um, meeting with artists who are exhibiting. I'll start by giving a bit of information about Saatchi art as well as my background, um, and then talk to you about some strategies that you can employ as you begin to build uh, your uh, art collection or perhaps expand an existing art collection. Um, I'll also be introducing you to a few artists who are showing right here at the other art fair in Brooklyn, um, whom I believe show particular promise and that I'm really excited about. Uh, I'm only sharing a few, but I really could, you know, go on all day about how amazing all of the artists who are showing um, really are and, and just how wonderful their work is. There's just such a great pool of talent at this fair, so it's, it's really exciting. Uh, so who am I um, and what is Saatchi Art? So again, uh, my name is Monty Preston. I am the manager of art advisory and curation at Saatchi Art. Um, and Saatchi Art has a really long tradition of discovering and supporting emerging artists. We started about 10 years ago and, um, you know, this is really what connects us with the other art fair and why we partner with the fair is um, this shared passion that we have to really um, find outstanding artists and give them opportunities that, you know, maybe the brick and mortar uh, traditional gallery world hasn't been able to offer. Um, and also to make art more accessible to people around the world. Um, you know, we work with artists from over 80 countries uh, and it's really our privilege to be able to help collectors and artists connect, um, you know, help support artists careers and help collectors find work that they really, really love. So we're really excited to partner with the other art fair as this provides an additional opportunity, which is a really unique one um, where we can offer collectors and artists the chance to meet and interact with one another um, in person in various cities around the globe um, or virtually as you're experiencing this weekend. Um, one of the exciting features of this virtual fair is that you have the ability to make appointments directly with um, artists, which is a really rewarding uh, and illuminating experience and a chance to learn more about an artist and their practice. So I would highly recommend that you do so. Um, I have been very fortunate to train uh, closely with Rebecca Wilson, so Saatchi Art's Chief Curator and Vice President of Art Advisory. Um, Rebecca has over 15 years of experience working with uh, and identifying top emerging artists, and I began working with Rebecca in 2018, and now as the manager of curation, I oversee um, all of our artist selection for various editorials, uh, including our annual Rising Stars report. Um, and this report really highlights um, a selection of the most promising young artists from around the world, including recent grads from top BFA and MFA programs, um, which I would certainly recommend reviewing if um, if you're interested in, in building a collection of noteworthy artists. Um, so uh, how do I build a collection and how do I find uh, it works worth investing in? This is a question that you're all here for. So um, the number of artworks available online has really exploded in recent years. Um, and this is extremely exciting as it makes the art world uh, more accessible for artists and collectors alike. Um, but it can be a bit daunting since uh, as a collector, you have quite a few options. Um, so I have a few recommendations for you as you're getting into this space uh, with a collection building um, or investment mindset. Oops, here we go. Uh, firstly, the most important thing is really to gravitate toward work that you love. So there is a reason that as you're walking around a gallery or if you, you know, see an artwork online that you have that sort of visceral response, um, this is something that you should pay attention to, right? You really wanna follow your gut, you wanna follow your heart and really pay attention to those reactions that you have when you find an artwork that you love. Um, one of the things that I look for is, uh, and I really keep an eye out for uh, when I'm looking at artists is uh, finding work um, and finding an artist who has a distinctive style. So for me, this is really um, a point of convergence between uh, somebody who has artistic talent in terms of execution and also really strong ideas and perspectives. 
Um, and these two factors can really generate an exciting signature style and, you know, sort of a sense that you're seeing something that's special to a particular artist and hopefully something that you've not quite seen before. Um, and once you have found this work that you're interested in, you know, there are some things that you can do to evaluate the work and understand more about it. So you might begin investigating um, a bit of the backstory. So the why being, you know, why, why do you like the work? Um, it might be the emotion that it stirs or a combination of the formal elements. Um, it could be the artist is manipulating the materials in a way that you've never seen before. Um, you know, why did they choose this particular subject matter? Why were these color choices made? You know, why did they choose to use these materials, for instance? Um, we would also look at the story of the work, and this often uh, is related to the story of the artist. So what was the inspiration? Um, is it, you know, it's a way of really connecting with the work, understanding more about the artist and connecting, um, you know, with these creative choices and, and the people who are making this work that you're looking at. So it's really great to sort of investigate a little bit more about the piece. Um, we at Sochi Art are you know, really transparent about this information. Uh, if you come to Sochi Art, um, you know, you can see all of this information and learn more about the artists and the artworks. And uh, you, we also list, you know, all of the pricing for an, an artist and all of their sales. So you can review a sales history, for instance. Um, and, you know, this is really important to us and, and transparency is also really important to the other art fair as well. Um, and again, you know, I really highly recommend that you make appointments with artists this weekend uh, to speak with them um, as it's such an incredible and really unusual opportunity. Um, you might also consider the question of education. So one of the things that we do uh, as curators is attend BFA and MFA shows, and we like to identify really young uh, emerging artists at like an early stage in their careers and, and just wanting to support them and help them get on with their careers. Um, however, there are also many artists who are self-taught and this isn't something to be dismissed, right? Um, many, many incredible artists and a lot of artists in the art historical world were self-taught, for instance, Van Gogh. Um, it really takes a lot of drive and trial and error and self-teaching in order for somebody without a formal arts background to you know, be in the position to be showing their work, for instance, at a fair like this. And you know, this is something that you wanna pay attention to, right? The, these people have drive and they're really motivated and um, it takes a lot of risk and courage to, to do these things. And um, you know, a lot of experimenting with different materials and trying different techniques. So this is something that you should watch out for as well. Um, I also like to you know, see if an artist has been invited to exhibitions such as this one. Um, have they shown in, in gallery shows or at art fairs? Have they won awards or been nominated for prizes? And these are all things that, that you know, sort of indicate um, an artist who's up and coming and who has some promise. So uh, those are good to look at. And then you may also want to um, look deep, more deeply at the work and think about the actual execution of the piece and how it's made. So uh, what technical skills and abilities have gone um, on in creating this work? And you can get really up close in person to an artwork. Um, and at this fair in particular, uh, in the virtual gallery, you can zoom right in and, and get a really close look at the piece and, and understand it more deeply that way. Um, I also recommend looking at the full body of work uh, and see how the concepts that an artist is working on in one piece might carry on as a thread in the other works in their portfolio. Um, I think it's a really great sign to see this. You know, it shows that they have a deep pool of inspiration to draw from. Um, and if you like their early work uh, and, you know, maybe their current work, it means you will probably still find their work exciting in the future. And that's something to think about, um, you know, in considering investing in an artist and, you know, their longevity and, and their future career as well. Of course, a wonderful place to start uh, discovering new artists is here at the other art fair. So uh, buying work by emerging artists often before they get taken on by bigger galleries is a really great way uh, to acquire your first pieces at a more accessible price, um, and also to have the experience of becoming a patron of a young artist and really developing those relationships. So uh, if you're finding any of this overwhelming, um, you could always get help. Uh, you can work with an art advisor who can provide guidance and recommendations to you. It can be really time consuming, obviously, to do all of this research yourself. So it's something that we offer people through our art advisory services at Sochi Art. Um, our team of art advisors and curators offer tailored one-on-one -on -one art advisory sessions and can recommend works to you based on your personal preferences and the amount that you'd like to invest. So you're absolutely welcome to get in touch with me um, or to get in touch with our team. You can email us at curator.com.
Um, or you can submit a request for somebody to reach out to you by going to sachier.com slash art advisory. Um, so I have that up here on the slide for your reference. Please don't hesitate to reach out. So uh, let's move on to a few artists who are showing at the fair. Um, oh God. Okay. <clears throat> so let's move on to a few artists who are showing at the fair. Um, again, I want to stress that uh, the most important thing is that you should really love an artwork and feel that you've invested in something that will make you happy every time that you see it. Um, once you have found an artist that you love, you can do your homework and really find out you know, where they studied, what exhibitions they've been in, um, any prizes, are they already selling their work? Uh, but when you when you buy an artwork, you really need to love what you're buying. And you shouldn't be thinking about just the investment aspect, right? Art, it's not a product. It's something that you have an emotional relationship with. And there are no guarantees in terms of investments. Um, so, you know, you really want to love what you're buying. Uh, that said, we have a lot of experience working with emerging artists. And I'm really excited to talk to you about a few um, who are showing at this very fair. So let's get started. Um, Slideshow is really laggy. Apologies. So I wanted to start with Cortland uh, Swartz um, because I'm really excited about his works and um, I've actually just acquired a small piece myself. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is, so to speak. Um, so Court, uh, Court Swartz lives in Toronto, Canada, and um, he graduated from OCAD University uh, with a BFA um, in 2015. And he's also studied at uh, Toronto's Academy of Realist Art. Um, and you know, during these studies, he really found the inspiration to create works that involve the viewer uh, without using any subject matter or objective um, message. So the works that he is exhibiting um, at the fair are his large scale abstract paintings. Um, and they're created on back painted acrylic. So the acrylic is colored throughout and this lends sort of an additional uh, type of color to the whole piece. Um, he's done this uh, with like blue or bright magenta or something very dark like bronze. So it'll become tinted like sunglasses, but then under direct light, you can see the composition within the piece. Um, and this is really interesting because, you know, court plays with light in, and the idea of how shifting light can completely change the way that something looks. And this is really pervasive across his whole portfolio of works. Um, this idea too was really at the root of cubism, the idea of looking at things from multiple points of view at the same time. Um, and it's also a very minimalist ethos, you know, as minimalist artists were interested in making objects that involve the surrounding space and shifting viewers' viewpoints um, to create a really dynamic aesthetic experience rather than one meant to be viewed from a single vantage point. So uh, in 2013, you can look at some of his other work as well. Um, here's an example of, of one of his paintings, which I think is really beautiful. Um, but in, in 2013, Court um, began to suspend sculptural forms of paint within geometric prisms of uh, hand cast acrylic glass. Um, and you know, there is really no single or immediate way to experience each piece. You know, as you look at a work from different angles, um, it's going to expose a different refraction of the brush strokes contained within the sculpture. And um, this really, you know, enables the appearance of movement within the work. Um, we can see this also being explored further in his uh, milk carton series, which I just love. Um, you know, being really selective about the way that the surface clarity creates windows and apertures. Uh, offers, um, you know, insight into the internal elements of the pieces as they're concealed and revealed. And um, these pieces in particular are also really accessible in price. You'll see them um, in the fair and in the one, under $500 collection. Um, and also if you visit Court's portfolio of works on Saatchi Art. Uh, so, you know, I really like to explore an artist's entire portfolio, um, as I mentioned earlier, to understand the evolution of their practice. And I think it's a great sign to see Court um, experimenting and pushing the boundaries of his practice and challenging himself with new media and ideas. Uh, when you do a deeper dive into an artist's greater body of work, you know, it helps to situate the particular work that you're considering within their portfolio and that can make something even more meaningful for you. So, um, I'm really excited about Quartz work and I, I hope that I hope that you like it. You check it out. And then uh, the next artist on my list is Alice Yang. So uh, here's an image of her booth. 
Uh, Alice is a South Korean artist working between Seoul and New York, and um, the work she's showing at the fair highlight her practice uh, well, mainly centering around um, painted works on um, of acrylic on canvas. So when you get to Alice's booth, uh, you'll see that her artist statement takes a prominent position. Um, I love this because it really invites you to reconsider what you look at and the impression that you have initially of her pieces and, and take a closer look. So uh, I'll read it to you. It says, my paintings are not a vague or abstract state. They are precise creatures that seek to perform definitive and decisive gestures. Their starting point is the tangible world. I collaborate with images and shapes as if they were another living being. A small bit or essence of reality is taken from the world around me. Um, to me, you know, this feels really reminiscent of uh, symbolism or, you know, gesturing towards or giving form to sort of a more spiritual dream world. Some of her works are, um, you know, very apparently, uh, to me anyway, landscapes. And um, we can look at this piece right here. It reminds me a lot of, you know, Miro. Um, other works of hers are more like a scene from a dream, but they're very cast in a really warm and welcoming light. Um, she describes uh, in some of her artwork descriptions her work as, you know, having bright spots, which I think just feels really appropriate to, uh, to the pieces. Um, at, you know, as we discussed, you might be drawn by an emotional connection to an artwork as I was with Alice's work. And I think uh, for me, I just really like the waves of positive energy that sort of radiate from the vibrant color choices that she's made um, and the gentle handling of, as she says, her subject's essence. Um, you know, very subtle, but um, powerful. And, and they provide an impression of a scene or um, a, a person or some experience. And I think, I just think they're really amazing. So, um, you know, in addition to the beauty of Alice's works, her CV is also really strong. Uh, she graduated uh, with a BFA from um, School of Visual Arts in New York and an MFA from Hongik University in Seoul. Um, and she's also shown internationally at various galleries and exhibitions in New York, Paris, South Korea, um, and participated in uh, multiple artist residency programs. So um, you can check out more of her work and get up close and personal uh, at the fair later on. And then the last artist that um, I wanted to highlight is um, artist Jimena Carranza. So Jimena studied photography at the Academy of Visual Arts in Mexico and then um, further uh, pursued arts education at uh, New Schools Person School of Design um, and the International Center of Photography in New York. So um, Jimena is uh, exhibiting her paintings. Um, at the fair rather than her photographs, but um, we'll take a look a little bit at some of her photographs later as well, because I, I think they're quite interesting when you pair the two together. Um, her work really recalls sort of this like line quality um, and the cartographic compositions of Julie Maritou, who's a top selling contemporary artist. Um, and, you know, given uh, when you read more about Jimenez's uh, artist statement, you know, she has a, a strong interest in signs and sort, sort of codification and constructing her own universe. So you might position um, Jimena's work as sort of an emotional or an, an, an interior mapping. Um, I'm particularly interested in the complexity of the language that she creates in her works, which uh, she describes as motivated by a constant internal search and an urge to build her own personal universe. Um, so, you know, we can see uh, this sort of state of consciousness and exploration of consciousness and state um, expressed through explosions of color and texture and, and really powerful gestural um, marks. Let's see if I can get this slideshow and move forward. Here we go. Um, her inspiration comes from observing uh, how different states um, of consciousness can shape the perception of the world and ourselves. Um, and she really looks inwards to find transformation and liberation in her paintings. So I just think they're really, really amazing seeing all of the texture and the detail um, and definitely worth, worth uh, reviewing. Um, and at, you know, as I said, while not on display here today, Jimena is also a really wonderful photographer and she has a very powerful narrative voice in her images. Um, what I think is really amazing is how that narrative is you know, while it's abstracted, it feels very apparent within her paintings. 
right? So you can you can sort of see a connection between these works. Um, not that they are necessarily connected, but I think if you compare her photography against her paintings, um, you know, there's there's a concept there that is very strong and very present um, across these two mediums that she explores. So here's another example, um, which I think is just, you know, it just feels really great. It's like you look at the painting and there's a story underneath of it. And, you know, perhaps it's a story similar to the narrative that we see in um, this, this photograph, for instance. So I think her work is really phenomenal. Um, and Jimena has been exhibiting internationally uh, and with regularity since um, 2016, with shows in Mexico, um, Medellin, in New York. Uh, you know, she's in gallery shows, exhibitions, fairs. So I, I would recommend checking her out as well. Um, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. And uh, I really hope that reviewing these works has given you some insight into things that we look for as curators when making sense of an artwork um, and determining its significance. Again, these are just a few notable artists that um, I, I really like that are on display at the other art fair, but I, I could have gone on forever about many, many different artists. So um, I hope you take these methods and go and explore the artist booths on your own. Um, again, I'll reiterate that the best advice when it comes to acquiring art is to buy what you love. This applies to whether you decide to buy one piece of art for a specific place in your home um, or for a whole collection of works. Um, in terms of a good place to start for budget, you know, don't be afraid of collecting limited editions. They tend to be much more reasonably priced than paintings or sculptures. Um, and you can really get some amazing screen prints and mono prints and some sculptures are available in editions, for instance. Um, but it's a, it's a good place to start. And uh, I don't think it's really fair to say that they don't necessarily have any value. A lot of really famous artists get editions. Um, Picasso, for instance, Matisse, and you see their editions coming up for sale at auction for really quite considerable prices. So it's worth investing in. Um, and then another approach that you might take if you are uh, starting to collect is uh, focusing on a specific medium or um, a specific theme. So for instance, Elton John is, is known for his photography collection and um, Peggy Guggenheim collected abstract and surrealist works and sculptures. So uh, you, know, you might decide hey, I, I'd like to start a collection of small works um, like the Vogels did. Uh, they were a couple in, in New York in the 60s who only bought work that they really loved regardless of what the critics were saying and um, the rules that they, ha they had to carry, be able to carry at home. So they ended up with a collection of over uh, 4,000 works by big name artists um, such as you know, Roy Lichtenstein, Donald Judd, and, and Chuck Close. And um, they ended up donating their collection to the National Gallery of Arts in Washington. So you know, you, you can really uh, make collecting art fun um, and, you know, pick pick an idea that um, resonates with you and, and, and collect around that. Um, and I've just put this back up here on the screen again, you know, such here offers free art advisory services that you can access on our website and you can be connected with um, a personal advisor who can help find works according to your preferences and your parameters. Um, and here at the other art fair, again, you know, you have the ability to set up a time to chat uh, on video with artists directly. Um, so please let us know if, if you know, you're having any difficulty with that. Um, there is help available at the fair, and I would really, really recommend that you connect with some artists while you're here. So uh, it's a really crucial time to support emerging artists, um, especially on the heels of a challenging year. And we are really happy to help you on your journey as a collector. Um, I'm so excited that you're all here to visit the fair, and I hope that you will have a really great time, great time exploring. So uh, thank you so much.